kept their illegal warriors probation in Washington State. I get the question all the time. Will I have a probation officer? Will I be on probation? It's pretty complicated, but I'm going to simplify it for you in this video. So if you're interested in this area of law, stay tuned. This is the video for you. My name is attorney Lance Fryer, and I'm a defense attorney in Linwood, Washington. My law firm's been defending people charged with crimes all throughout Washington State for more than 20 years. And I'm putting out these videos to help educate the public. So if you find this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people will get the help they need. Now, as always, I'm just going to jump right into it. Hey, Mr. Lawyer, will I be on probation? Am I going to have a probation officer? And as you might guess, the answer is it depends. But I think I've separated about three different situations that I want to cover here so you can understand um, what different types of probation there are. Um, and also, more importantly, what you can do to make sure that you have the least inconvenience and improve your chances of not having to check in with a probation officer should you be convicted of a crime. So I think first there's two different categories of um, uh, crimes that we're going to talk about, felonies and non-felonies. Um, felonies are uh, crimes that have more than a year in jail as the maximum, you know, serious uh, crimes. And then most everything else is a gross misdemeanor, that which is less than a year in jail as a maximum. Think DUI, uh, theft, uh, the lowest level of assault, lowest level domestic violence, stuff like that. So the three situations uh, that I mentioned I want to cover is one, something that's called community custody. That's for felony type probation. Two is for non-felonies, we're going to talk about um, an actual uh, probation officer type probation where you're monitored by the probation department and you have to see a probation officer. And the third situation is you have a conviction, you're on probation, but it's just monitored by the court. You would never know you're on probation. There's no probation officer you need to check in with. So what is situation one? And um, situation one is something called community custody. That's what we call probation at the felony offense level. And we think about movies and television and stuff like that. That's what we think about, I think, uh, when we think about probation. The type of probation officer that has the power to control what you do. The type of probation officer that can tell you where you can work, can tell you where you can live and inspect your house and do all these things. And so in Washington state, that's called community custody. And those type of probation officers are called uh, basically community uh, corrections, uh, you know, officers, community custody officers. It's um, they work for the Department of Corrections. And so if you get convicted of a felony, uh, most felonies will have some amount of community custody. The most serious felonies might be three years. There's some two years. Most are one year. Some are less. And some property crimes won't have any community custody. But basically, once you're convicted of that felony, the judge will order you to report to the Department of Corrections. There'll be some standard terms uh, that you would have to live up to that the court will order. There's terms they must order, um, and there's things that are discretionary. But the bottom line is, if you're convicted of a felony, that is most likely when you're going to have the really intrusive probation officer that you think about um, in you know, television and movies and things like that. So hopefully that doesn't apply to most of us. And now I'm going to move on to the, the broader topic, non-felony crimes. Here's where you can do something to improve your chances of not having a probation officer. So let's start with, let's say you are put on probation after a conviction in a criminal court and the court orders you to be monitored by probation, what does that mean? Well, criminal law is very local. And if you've seen some of my other videos, I say don't trust lawyer Google because broad generalities don't really do much good in your specific situation, any person's specific situation. What a probation officer does in Linwood will be different than what the probation off office does on the eighth floor in Seattle Municipal Court, right? They have this entire probation office. In Linwood, there's two very helpful probation officers. They're going to have a different way of doing things than the city of Seattle. That'll also be different than the King County probation officers for District Court or Snohomish County or Pierce County or Skagit County. And so for the most part, though, there's some similarities. They're not going to be coming to your home. They're not going to be controlling where you work. Basically, they're going to be looking for reports, looking for updates on whatever treatment that you've been ordered to do 
that they are scheduled to monitor. Typically, you'd be put on an active probation, is what we call this, because you still have some treatment left to do, some domestic violence classes, some, some alcohol classes, some drug classes, some counseling classes, something that you need to do. And it's just easier for the court to, to have the probation person make sure you get it done. And so in some cases, they're gonna make you come in once a month or however often, or they might make you phone in. Um, and it's just sort of dependent upon um, what they do in that court, but it's not going to be as serious as what you see on TV. And oftentimes the good news is once you finish the treatment, you may be taken off of active probation and put on what most, most, most places call monitored probation, where um, either they don't make you see the probation officer and the probation officer just runs your record, or even the probation officer just kicks it back to the court and a court clerk just checks your record for new crimes every so often. So um, if you get assigned to active probation at the non-felony level, you're probably gonna have some inconvenience, um, but it won't be nearly as scary as the felony side. So what's that other situation, Lance? Well, you get put on probation to the court, but you're not put on active probation. And this is what I was talking about earlier. We tell our clients quite often, hey, if you've got a DUI, let's get the alcohol evaluation done. Let's get the alcohol drug information school done. Let's get the DUI victims panel done. Because if you have all those, all those things done in most courts, if we have a resolution of the case that requires you to stay out of trouble, a period of probation where you have to have no crimes, they're not going to assign you to a probation officer because there's nothing for them to do. Right? You've already done all the affirmative conditions. If all you have to do is stay out of trouble, well, a court clerk can check that. You don't need to go um, in and see someone to do that. Hopefully, that's how most courts do it. And so you can try to uh, improve your chances of not having an active probation by getting stuff done early, right? And there's other good news to that. In the large majority of courts, not all, but in the large majority of courts, if you're put on active probation, it costs you a bunch of money, okay? The the way that I look at courts, and I used to be in the system from the prosecution, prosecution side, my understanding is that uh, when the court charges a probation fee, they can keep that money to pay, pay their probation department, right? So they've got to charge you when they're using the probation department more than if you're not. Courts don't get to keep the fines and things like that. That goes to the government. But so if you get put on probation, active probation, most courts are going to charge you quite a bit of money for the privilege of being put on probation because they've got to pay their employees, right? And that's how it's set up. So if you don't have active probation, your total cost, your fines and probation costs are going to be a lot less. Um, so um, if you are found guilty of a crime, what are we talking about probation? Well, let's say uh, the maximum penalty is 364 days in jail and you aren't gonna do any jail time. Well, they would send you to 364 days in jail with 364 days suspended, meaning zero days to serve, thank goodness, on the condition you stay out of trouble for a period of time. That's the probationary period. For most non-felonies, that's two years of staying out of trouble. That's the maximum time the court can monitor you. For domestic violence and DUI crimes, the maximum time is five years. So um, people get confused. Um, I might ask a potential client, hey, are you still on probation? And they think probation officer, and that's reasonable. But what I mean is, are you still under the jurisdiction of the court? Because this new thing you're seeing me about, while well, you're seeing me as a defense attorney probably, uh, may violate your stay out of trouble terms of probation that the court clerk is still monitoring and this might draw a review hearing. So um, will you have a probation officer? If you have a felony, and you're convicted, almost certainly yes. If you have a non-felony and you've done all the treatment, you probably won't. But if you haven't done all the treatment yet by the time you're sentenced, then probably yes. And then you uh, are convicted and you've done everything you need to do, there's no new treatment, almost certainly no, you will not have a probation officer. And what about an SOC? We talk about that in this channel, a stipulated order of continuance a continuance for dismissal, it's pretty much the same thing. If you have affirmative actions you still need to do, you'll usually have a probation officer. If you don't have affirmative actions you need to do during the SOC, you'll be less likely to have a probation officer. And if you do as a matter of routine in that situation, you're gonna have to see them a lot less and you may not even have to see them at all. So I know that was a lot to cover. 
Uh, hopefully it's a little bit more understandable. It's not as scary as you think. For the most part, probation is there to help you, but ask your attorney. Each probation department is different. Some of them are more to help you and some are more punitive. And so um, make sure you check with your attorney about how uh, it's best to behave when dealing with your probation officer. Usually you wanna look at them as someone who's trying to help you get through things. There are exceptions to that rule. So if you found this video useful, please like and please subscribe. More people will get the help they need. And more importantly, if you have a legal problem, if you have a criminal charge, you have a review hearing, something in Washington State, feel free to give my office a call. We've been doing this for more than 20 years. We'll listen to what happened, we'll identify a way forward, and we will be there for you. Thank you.